and welcome back. This is Rido and we're talking about Warcry 2.0. Before we dive into things today, um, let me just say thank you very much because there's 699 people as we're recording this who uh, apparently are weird enough to enjoy looking at Excel tables uh, about Warcry. So thank you very much for that. Um, to keep moving, uh, one more thing I would like to say is that uh, I have ordered a new PC and I expect it to arrive soon. So that might be a bit problematic because once I uh, get it I'll obviously have to set it up and everything and I don't know how quickly I'll be able to record again. So there might be a couple of days um, in which I don't record at all. We'll see. So. I'm very sorry for that. Um, well, other than that, let's get into the video. Today we're going to talk about the flashy Eater Chords. And we're going to talk about all the new units, how their stats look, how they perform points-wise, the new abilities, and last but not least, a list I would propose. Or actually two lists I would propose. So, let's get started here with the Abhorrent Arch Regent. He costs 220 points, has 5 inch movement, toughness 4, 28 wounds. So that's average speed for the warband, but quite good in general. Toughness 4 is normal, 28 wounds is pretty high. So for 220 points, I think that's already decent. Ren uh, 1 inch range, 4 attacks, strength 4, 3, 5 damage. That is really not bad for a 220 point model. 7.4 damage on average, I think. That is pretty sexy. I do like the Abhorrent Ghoul uh, Arch Regent. Then we've got the Abhorrent Ghoul King. He's basically what the Arch Regent is, just a little bit cheaper. So 195 points, so 25 points less. He loses 3 wounds. And his damage output is only 2-4 instead of 3-5. So, um, that's where the point difference comes from. He's dealing two points damage less on average per action and therefore it's just cheaper. So that's something you're going to see with a lot of these new leader options. They are very much, uh, you've, like, like they are all good and you can just vary as you wish in terms of like if you have a couple of points to spare, you might just as well upgrade the Ghoul King to the Arch Region, for example. Or if you really need some points, you could potentially drop from the Arch Region to the Ghoul King. Well, then we've got the Vargolf Courtier. And he's basically a cheaper version of the Crypt Infernal. Um, the Crypt Infernal has been called the best model in the game. I'm pretty sure Anna of Red Rose Wargaming, great channel by the way, please go and check them out. Um, I'm pretty sure Anna was of the opinion that the Crypt Infernal might be the best model in the game. That's because it's very fast, has a lot of wounds, 40 wounds is insane, so very survivable, and a ton of damage output. Basically everything you'd want. Well, the Vargolf Courtier is almost the same, but a bit of a cheaper version. 275 points, so 25 points less. Movement 8, not movement 10, but he also flies, so it's not that bad. Movement 8 with flying is already is still very good. 35 wounds instead of 40, so you're losing 5 wounds. Um, his damage profile is quite different, however he comes out at almost the same damage values. Uh, sorry if I'm here. The Crypt Infernal has 7.6 damage on average, the Vargolf Courtier does 7.1, so you're losing half a point of damage on average per action. It's not massive. So the Vargolf Courtier is basically a cheaper version of the Crypt Infernal. Then we've got, I'm going to jump down here, because we've also got the Crypt Infernal Courtier, who is 15 points more expensive than the Crypt Infernal, and you guessed it, he's a bit better but basically the same. So also 10 inch move, also toughness 4, gets 2 wounds on top compared to the normal Crypt Infernal. Uh, that's not going to change anything, I don't think. Um, he is strength 5 instead of strength 4, that's the only difference in his damage output, so 
one attack five uh, one range five attacks strength five two five damage whereas the normal crypt inferno was strength four so you're getting 9.3 damage on average per action that is a hell of a lot of damage now we've got the um, crypt gas court here uh, sorry uh, just maybe to say this um, I think 15 points is not a ton to pay for this kind of jump in damage however do keep in mind that 300 points is already very expensive 315 is even more expensive you do have to be a bit watchful of not committing too many points into one model because if your opponent for example has an ability to net one of your guys down you're going to be in trouble so yeah that's that's one maybe the one thing to keep in mind here then we've got anyways we've got the crypt ghast courtier so again well we've we've had the crypt ghast which is a crypt ghoul leader now we're getting into the courtier who's 15 points more expensive movement 5 toughness 3 just like the crypt ghast 18 wounds instead of 16 wounds so again two wounds extra uh, range of one four attacks strength four two four damage where the normal crypt ghast had strength three so we're jumping from 4.1 damage to 5.4 on average uh, a bit of a bump in damage there it's still a very cheap leader and i think like with his stats he's pretty decent especially for 140 points that is cheap 140 points is really really cheap um yeah i think he's he's solid like the biggest issue he has is that there's so many great lead options and they've added even more all of the new models are leader options so with all the ton of good leader options the crypt gas court here looks a bit sad but for his points cost he's a really solid model then we've got the crypt haunter court here last but not least well he's also almost the same as the normal crypt haunter costs 20 points extra you get two two wounds on top so movement six toughness for 42 wounds and he also comes in at strength five for that 9.3 damage instead of the 7.6 so just like uh, for the crypt infernal court here just from this i'm a little bit disappointed i must say because all the these form new models the Vargolf courtier the crypt gas courtier the uh, crypt infernal courtier so basically all the courtiers are just slightly changed versions of leader options we already had the only real new ones they added are the arch regent and the ghoul king and those two are basically the same as well and the only difference being that the arch regent is slightly more punchy so you really got one new model and a couple of variations if, if we break it down um so let's check out the new abilities shall we uh, or first off let's 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 see how the, the the points values are for these guys so arch regent ghoul king courtier crypt infernals and haunters you can see are all average damage they are not amazing however they all cost a lot of points you wouldn't expect them to be amazing on top of that all the flying ones so the uh, um, the Vargo and the crypt infernal they also have to pay for 10 points of movement and flight so they are you would expect the damage per point value to be a bit lower to make up for the high mobility but that's not really what we're seeing here and then we've got the crypt ghast court here who's actually very good point value that's what i said earlier like on a pure damage per point value basis he's he's a good model um he's not as survivable as the others of course um some of these guys are very very tough to bring down and especially the crypt haunter for his points is, is really tough anyways so i think points value wise all of these are valid options none of them stands out at stands out as particularly bad or good so i think all of them are good additions in terms of point value now we've got um, a look at the abilities so the abhorrent ghoul king and arch regent they share one room mark 
and they get two new abilities. They get a double, which allows them to heal by the value of the ability. That's not great. It's n it's a it's an okay ability. It's something you might use at some point. It might come up. It's not going to be great. Um, I would not bring them for this ability. However, they also get a triple which is add one to their attacks characteristics of all friendly units within nine inches. That is an awesome ability. That is a really, really good ability. Especially if you have a lot of ghouls who are very fast and very cheap, but do not have many attacks and bumping all of their attacks stats is pretty great. So uh, yeah, that triple ability is, is, is awesome. Then we've got a new triple for the Vargolf courtier. Um, that's basically add half the value of the ability to the attacks characteristics of the next attack action. So it's going to be good when you move in. So you've made one of your actions a move. And then you get to some enemy, which is most likely with 8 inch move and flight. So you only have to do one, one move to engage. Then you use that triple, say it's a triple four, you're gonna get two extra attacks, bump his damage up significantly, and then possibly slaughter one model straight up. That's when this ability is gonna be good. It's not gonna be that great um, when you're attacking twice, because if you do that, you might as well use Onslaught, which is only a double and gives you the same value. But it yeah, it's certainly going to come in useful at some point. The, the biggest issue with this triple I have is that it competes with the triple that everyone, all the leaders get, um, which is adding the value of the triple to the move characteristic for all your friendly fighters. It's basically the same the green skins have on their wall. So, um, yeah, that is a great ability, and the, the triple for the Abhorrent Ghoul King is, an, is a great ability. Man, these, these guys are looking stacked. Flesh Eater Courts getting all the great abilities. So what kind of... Um, what, what would I suggest in terms of... Um, in terms of a list? Well... This is the list I'd probably call the Double Whammy. You get the Crypt Infernal, as I said, probably one of the best models in Warcry. <clears throat> and you get the Crypt Infernal Courtier, who is even more punchy, even more survivable, same, just as quick. So you get two of the strongest, most powerful leader options available with both access to that triple to buff movement of your other guys. You don't know if you're going to need it that much, but you're certainly going to use it turn one. And then you get seven crypt ghouls. Because you want bodies. You want a ton of bodies to dominate objectives. And your crypt ghouls are going to be the cheap options to do that. And you're going to have a lot of punch out of just these two models. So that's the double whammy option. Um, you're going to be relying very much on your Crypt Infernal and your Courtier, though. If one of these dies, you're going to be in a bit of trouble, and if both die, you will probably have lost. Anyways, how could you change this? Well, I think one option would be to get the Abhorrent Arch Region and get the Vargolf Courtier, and then throw in more ghouls. Yes. So... This list is relying a lot more upon your ghouls. You, you do have the Vargolf because he's almost as good as the Crypt Infernal. You want that flying option, you want that heavy punch. Having one of those guys is not bad at all. Your Abhorrent Arch Regent also delivers some very heavy punching, don't get me wrong. 7.4 damage is very, very good, so you do get a lot of punch out of him but you also get that triple to buff all you guys around you. Now with 11 models, you can have five in a single battle group. So you would bring the Abhorrent Arch Regent and four ghouls 
and they could go to town with your triple ability buffing all your ghouls up. That's going to be your game plan there. That's also a very solid list, so I think both of these are going to be competitive. However, there is literally 20 lists you could come up with for Flesh Eater Courts who would all be competitive. I think the Flesh Eater Courts, they used to be great, and with the change to that, basically the change that you can have two leaders instead of one now, they are getting even better, um, even more options for leaders, some great abilities added. Just a really, really solid warband. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching, and this is Rejo signing out.